Hi, Steve Arterburn here, and uh, today I want to go over the tenth, maybe the most important uh, concept that we can talk about in overcoming our fear and anxiety. But I want to mention to you uh, that I've been recording Kirby McCook, and I've been reading through Kirby McCook and the Jesus Chronicles, and this is uh, a book for 8 to 12 year olds. And uh, this book uh, received uh, a nomination for Book of the Year uh, in Young uh, Christian Literature. It's really good. Um, I think it's great. Marcus Brotherton, who's a New York Times bestselling author, did this with me. And the illustrations by Damien Zane are just fantastic. So um, if you want something for your kids to hear, I'm reading it to them, or you can get the book at newlife.com or 1-800-NEW-LIFE. But this is the uh, tenth concept I want to share with you today, and this uh, this concept is so powerful. It is called persevering endurance, uh, the endurance that perseveres, uh, that never gives up. Um, you know, at the end um, of the day, after we have tried just about everything possible uh, to change the way uh, that we do things, to change the way that we think, you know. There's a, there's a passage of scripture that really helps us no matter where we are. Listen to this. Remember, dear brothers and sisters, that few of you were wise in the world's eyes of, or powerful or wealthy when God called you. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think that they are wise. And he chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and used them to bring nothing to what the world considers to be important. I'm sorry, and used them to bring to nothing what the world considers to be important. So what it's saying is that God uses the things that most people think would never be used. God uses the people that uh, you might think he couldn't use. And uh, let me just give you an example of that. A lot of people feel like, you know, if I was better, if I was good enough, uh, God would use me. But when I think back in 1995, I was touring uh, several speakers around the country. Now imagine this. I had reserved nine ballrooms in nine cities, big, huge ballrooms where we would try to fill it and these speakers would speak and we would promote it and uh, it was a part of our outreach uh, program in what was then called the Menrith Meyer New Life Clinics. We had less than a thousand people show up in all nine cities combined. For instance, Chicago, biggest ballroom you've ever seen, and there were 35 people there. It was humiliating, and it was embarrassing. Now, you'd think that the last person that God would ever use to start a movement where millions of people would show up would be me. Well, he did it anyway. But because he used me, I was never convinced because of this horrible failure in 95 of less than a thousand people when we started Women of Faith in 96 and 35,000 came and then the next year 150,000 came and after that over 300,000 a year came. Never thought that was because of me. I just felt like I was so fortunate that God could use me. And then when you think about my past of uh, having paid for a young woman to uh, or pressured her to have an abortion and pay for it. You'd think I'd be the last person that God would ever use in some kind of ministry to women. But I'll remember the, the speakers one year convinced me to speak at Women of Faith. And I told that story. And then I shared with them that maybe a man had pressured them to have an abortion and maybe that man would never ever ask for forgiveness. I asked them to forgive me because what I did was essentially against every woman alive, that I had objectified women, that I had not seen them as full and complete. And I received letter after letter after letter 
of how much that meant. See, God took something evil, something weak and wrong, and he brought something good out of it, and that's what he wants to do for every person. If we just won't give up on God, if we will hang in there, and if we'll persevere, he will receive the glory. God's ways aren't our ways. And uh, he's been making good things out of foolish things. And, you know, and just in the, in the midst of everything, it's just fascinating what God can do if we'll just trust him. You know, if, if it requires you talking to 20 people on 20 phone calls just to stay alive, call. You know, you can call 1-800-NEW-LIFE. If, if you have to go to five one-hour online meetings to keep from drinking, call. If you need to go to an online meeting um, to keep from eating yourself to death, do it. Patient endurance is what you need now so that you will continue to do God's will. Then you will receive all that he has promised. So we just need to endure patiently, persevere, and, and never ever give up. You know, another uh, translation uh, says that when we persevere, we receive the crown of life. That's what we're wanting. And so God knows what the struggle is. Him in the Garden of Gethsemane, he was really struggling. And, you know, he's like, hey, if I don't have to do this, I don't want to do this. I'll do it, but I'd prefer not. And he hung in there and he persevered. 1 Corinthians 13, 7 says, Love never gives up. It never loses faith. It's always hopeful, and it endures through every circumstance. You know, at our moment of greatest prayer, we can open up the Bible, and we can read about God's love. And, and, and that love empowers us, and it gives us the ability uh, to endure. And any kind of fellow believer... Uh, could be encouraged uh, the same way that Paul encouraged Timothy when things were tough in the very first days of the church. Endure suffering along with me, he said, as a good soldier of Christ. That's 2 Timothy 2, 3. So he wasn't saying, hey, Timothy, be real faithful and God's going to keep you from struggling or, or suffering or anything like that. No, he, he said, it's going to be tough, but I've been through it. You'll make it. We can do it together. So I just encourage you to endure suffering with me. Endure along with everybody that's struggling rather than give up. Don't give up. Don't quit. Do whatever you have to do to get through this. And you're going to be made stronger, better, and you'll grow closer to God. And, uh, and don't forget, you know, God will bring good out of this horrible thing. You, you probably don't feel it now. You may not feel it for a while. But one day we're going to look back on this and we're going to say, look what God did. Look how he brought people together. I know my church uh, there at Northview in Carmel, we have more people watching online our services than ever came before. So here's a great truth to help us in the struggle. Don't be afraid, for I am with you. Don't be discouraged, for I am your God. I will strengthen you and I will help you. I will hold you up with my victorious right hand. With all my heart, I believe that God can, will, and wants to hold you up with everything that he has. And you know, we, we believe that God called us to, to create new life 31 years ago for such a time as this. And I hope that one of the things you'll do is accept our offer to help you. You can call 1-800-NEW-LIFE to talk to someone. You can go to newlife.com and look at all the resources that we have there. Uh, we want to be there for you. Come and join us for one of our, our conferences online uh, where you know we're keeping people safe. But boy, are we ever helping them transform their lives. Let me read this to you as I close up uh, this 10th session with you. It's from our, our book, 100 Days of Prayer. 1 John 5, 4 says, For whatever is born of God overcomes the world, and this is the victory that has overcome the world, our faith. When we face the inevitable difficulties of life here on earth, 
God stands ready to protect us. All of us face times of adversity. On occasion, we must all endure the disappointments and the tragedies that befall believers and non-believers alike. The reassuring words of 1 John 5, 4 remind us that when we accept God's grace, we overcome the passing hardships of this world by relying on His strength, His love, and His promise for eternal life. When we call upon God in heartfelt prayer, He will answer, and in His own time, and according to His own plan, and He will heal us. And while we're waiting for God's plan to unfold, and for His healing touch to restore us, we can be comforted in the knowledge that our Creator can overcome any obstacle, even if we can't. So let's take God at His word, and let's trust Him today and every day. Mrs. Charles Cowan said, God will make obstacles serve His purpose. Charles Stanley said, Adversity is always unexpected and unwelcome. It's an intruder and a thief. And yet in the hands of God, adversity becomes the means through which His supernatural power is demonstrated. And St. Thomas More said, Tribulation is a gift from God, one that He especially gives His special friends. And then finally, Peter Marshall. God will not prevent, permit any troubles to come upon us unless he has a specific plan by which great blessing can come out of difficulty. Today's prayer as I close. Dear Heavenly Father, when I'm troubled, you heal me. When I am afraid, you protect me. When I'm discouraged, you lift me up. In times of adversity, let me trust your plan and your will for my life. And whatever my circumstances, Lord, let me give you thanks and glory. I pray that um, something I've said today is encouraging to you. God is there for you in the midst of adversity and wants to use you to bring something powerful and wonderful and good out of it. Don't give up on God. God has not given up on you.